Actually, I probably wouldn't install the injectors up until you get close to a uh, to a shop that can tune your car because your car most likely will not run. What's going on guys? I am back here. Um, I'm doing an intro video. I forgot to do it for this uh, single 340 uh, fuel pump install. Um, so going to go ahead and take some time to record it for you guys. Go over some of the part. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, that that behind me? No, that's not that's not my LS1. LS1 is still healthy uh, and kicking in the car. This here is a six liter iron block that I'm going to be building. So um, if you guys want to see what's going on with that and how much horsepower that's going to be making here, stick around. I told you guys this channel is going to get awesome. Um, anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the uh, single 340 liter uh, per hour fuel pump install. Um, just going to go over some of the parts that you guys are going to need uh, for this uh, build. So here I have a 340 uh, fuel pump. Uh, the This one I got from TRE Performance. Um, I'm sure you can find them everywhere else. I'm just letting you guys know what I specifically used. Feel free to um, to explore um, and you know post comments in the comment section if you have a, a more budget friendly alternative uh, to this build. But we've got Terry Performance fuel pump. I think that was like a total of a hundred bucks. Um, I went with the Terry Performance 120 pound injectors. I believe the entire set cost me somewhere around 200 bucks, 220 something like that. And then the wiring harness from Racetronics, I believe they sell that on online for, I don't know, 75, 80 bucks. Uh, and then the modified bucket, which obviously comes with your car. Uh, I will be showing you guys how to do that, but that's obviously free. You're also going to need the, the black hose that comes along with um, the bucket that attaches to, to the fuel pump. You'll need that as well. Keep it. Um, for for a dual fuel pump setup it's a different hose that you're going to be using so it's fair this is a fairly cheap setup here shouldn't you shouldn't be spending more than i don't know 400 450 bucks on this entire thing here So I'm going to go ahead and get into how to uh, first and foremost uh, modify this bucket. Um, then I'll show a little bit of uh, install video for this wiring. Uh, the wiring actually may be for the dual fuel pump setup, but uh, it's still the same concept uh, how it wires from or how it's uh, routed from the back of the car to the front of the car. It just hooks up a little bit different. Um, the instructions come with the wiring harness, but essentially you basically, it's all plug and play. This plugs into the wiring harness uh, that's that plugs into the fuel sending unit, the ground, this relay hangs out in the back of the wheel well, and then this gets um, grounded to the body, and then this goes all the way to the front. This is the fuse, and this guy goes on to the alternator. So it's a fairly simple setup. I don't know, a couple of hours and you should have this uh, ready to go. It is important to note that if you do install this, especially the injectors, um, actually, I probably wouldn't install the injectors up until you get close to a uh, to a shop that can tune your car because your car most likely will not run uh, very long with, with large injectors. So what I did was when I did this, I went ahead and I installed my fuel uh, fuel components and then when I got to the shop I installed the injectors so just a little bit of a little bit of warning for you guys to save you some time well first of all the bucket actually comes with the end cap here I had to slice the end cap off as close to the bottom as possible um, round off the edges make sure everything looks good then I had to uh, drill four holes and basically position the 350 pump right underneath the top of the bucket so it kind of sits off to the side and is um, held in place by that uh, by the zip ties um, another issue you guys may run into is disconnecting this plug here from your fuel pump 
Um, the best way and the easiest way I found to do this is you get one of these pick tools and you're gonna go there's a little uh, access port here where the tab for the clip um, extends into you're going to press that and then you're going to scoop up while you pull on the side of on the side of this uh, plug and the plug will come out uh, fairly easy it's kind of hard to do this with one hand um, but let me see if I can try it Alright, this is what I'm talking about. This is a little nub that you press. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Alright guys, so here's a closer look of what this fuel sending unit looks like. Um, so I took the top off. As you can see, they have these three tabs. I always start with this one here, the one that has the most protrusion. Um, slip a screwdriver in there um, and kind of pry it away be careful so you don't damage these um, this plastic does bend a little but it does also crack um, anyway so pry these away pull the assembly out disconnected this from the fuel sending unit um, and then this is kind of what it looks like so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these zip ties all right so when it comes out the bottom here's what it looks like and then you can see in here I still retain the little gasket or locator gasket uh, for the fuel pump in there which is, sits on top of this guy here so pretty easy modification to do I'll just make sure when you guys are drilling your holes you do it to where the holes are actually going to hold the fuel pump closest to the uh, side of the uh, sending unit because it's offset right so it's not it's not right in the center it's actually up against this side so what I did was I put it down like this against the sending unit and then I drill the holes I did have to go off to the side just a little bit because mine did crack here when I was trying to remove this top so where I would have had to drill these holes was right in the crack and then obviously that wouldn't have uh, held so I had to go off to the side a little bit so my fuel pump was sitting a little bit off to the side um, other than that uh, pretty easy modification to do it took me a few minutes um, just make sure when you do this modification uh, make sure that you clean this thoroughly get all the shavings off uh, get as much of that plastic uh, um, residue off so it doesn't get sucked into the or sitting on top on the bottom of the gas tank and it starts clogging up the the filter the sock filter so anyway that's it see you guys here shortly so to install it you basically install the uh, cap there you put the you thread this line through the top of the bucket uh, then you have your fuel pump sitting out here you put everything together you insert the fuel pump and then you zip tie it to here I'm sure you can find a better way of holding the, the fuel pump inside the bucket uh, the biggest issue you're gonna run into is the opening of the gas tank is almost exactly this size so you can't put anything too thick on the outside otherwise it's not gonna go into the fuel tank um, zip ties hold up fine uh, if you could find a way to get these nubs on the inside um, it'll be much easier when I was originally putting this together I didn't think it was gonna be that close uh, to fitting but it was so anyway uh, I was still able to uh, get it out of the fuel tank the fuel tank is plastic so it has a little bit of flex to it um, just pull these out everything's fine So the way I have this routed is obviously 
this is the back wheel well you're gonna want to go through the channel down here at the bottom and it's going to go on the bottom of the car here and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your front wheel off you're gonna take the cover that goes on this area here it scoops underneath the car so when you take these 58 bolts that they have here to hold on to a cover just in case um, don't forget the other two that are at the bottom you can see them you can see them here forearm's got a pump from taking off all these uh, bolts anyway so can't really see in here um, but let's see if I get a better long story short there's a channel that runs through the bottom of the car and it comes out right through here so if you were to look through there you can actually see daylight on the other side you're going to run that wiring through here you're going to run it up this way and what happens is when you look down actually you can kind of see right this area here you're going to bring the wiring up the way i have it threaded is i brought it up brought it at the bottom of this tank and basically it runs one wire goes to the alternator the other wire goes here i use this bolt here uh, to hold on to this fuse that way if i ever have to check the fuse i simply just undo the clip i'm gonna take a look at the fuse looks good and plug it right back in not to mention it's not flopping around i highly 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 recommend buying i got this uh fiberglass wire running kit um from harbor freight it's like eight bucks anyway you're gonna need it because there's nothing that you can really get into this channel that's long enough i ended up using my dowel pins that i uh used when i did my camshaft swap um i basically taped them together and pushed the wiring through all the way over um it worked it's just not not the right tool for the right job and if you're going to reuse those dolphins you don't want a bunch of crap on them and, and introduce them into the motor.